Many teachers have what's called imposter syndrome, a feeling that you're not good enough. Even though they've studied teaching and have had some training, they don't feel like they're ready to take charge and lead a group of young minds. Perhaps they don't think they can control the classroom or that they don't know their subject matter well enough or they're unprepared for the amount of admin that you have to do as a teacher. Whatever their reason might be, they have chosen this profession, but now they're second guessing themselves that they are able to do the job. First, know that all of us have gone through that struggle of confidence. You are not alone. For as long as there's been teaching, new teachers have struggled with this crisis of faith in themselves. I want to share some tips on how to become a more confident and competent teacher. Body language says a lot. It affects how others see us and how we see ourselves. In her TED talk, social psychologist Amy Cuddy argues that power posing, standing confidently, even if we don't feel it, can boost our self-confidence. So stand tall, shoulders back, breathe deeply, hold eye contact with your students, and move slowly. Remember, they are your students. You need to be strong for them. Don't react. What do I mean with that? Needy people are in a constant state of reaction. Because they are weak, they react to their environment, other people, and situations. Think of the most confident teacher you have ever seen. Do they react quickly to everything? No. They slow down and they respond calmly and methodically to whatever happens. You need to train yourself to be unreactive to stimuli in your environment. Rather, slowly and calmly respond to what's happening. Students will constantly try and get your attention, but if you stop reacting to them, you will start growing in confidence and they will notice it too. People that are in control respond slowly and methodically. Followers react on reflex. If you train yourself not to be reactionary when it comes to your students, they will start falling into your frame. And subconsciously, by not allowing yourself to be reactive, you will become a mentally stronger and more confident person. Students and situations will test you. So remember to stay calm and centered. You will never be confident if your planning is inadequate. Prepare yourself well. The most common reason why most teachers are stressed at work is because they haven't planned everything out well enough and their paperwork isn't up to scratch. Many of them only working week to week, unsure about the future and only hoping that everything will work out. Immediately clear your schedule and do nothing until your planning and assessment is ahead of schedule. But Eric, I need the weekend to see my friends and I've got family commitments. I need to de-stress. You are not giving your family and friends the best possible version of yourself if you are burdened by stress from work. Make your bed, take time out and get ahead with your admin. Master your subject. Plan lessons that align with curriculum goals. Read and understand the material that you will cover with your students every week. The better you understand your subject, the better you will be at presenting and facilitating it to your students. Ask an experienced teacher to review your lesson plan and give you some feedback. Have a backup plan in case your lesson doesn't last long enough or if your students complete their classwork early. Idle students can create chaos in the classroom, which will undermine your confidence as a leader. And substitute plans for if things don't work out as they're supposed to. A bonus idea is to let students prepare something for in case they have idle time. When I taught elementary school back in the day, I used to have a rule that students should always have a book to read for when they finish with their work. They loved it, their parents loved that they were reading, and I loved it because I never had to worry what to do with them in case they finished with their work. Develop a discipline plan for your classroom and post it on the walls. Tell your students your expectations of their behavior the very first day of class and explain the consequences for unacceptable behavior. Implement the discipline plan fairly 
and consistently. When something bad does happen, see it as a teaching opportunity to remind them of the rules. You can also role play the negative behavior to show students what you expect. Don't fear criticism. Use it to your advantage. If you've been given some feedback that you deem negative, instead utilize it as a tool to change. By acting on criticism instead of wallowing in it, you can turn a negative into a positive and help you not only to build confidence but also improve your practice. That being said, don't surround yourself with negative people. People that moan and complain about everything will only bring you down. Try and help them at first, but if they don't want to change and improve, they won't. Rather look for someone that can build you up to form a partnership. Realize your strengths. Take some time to reflect on your practice and single out the positives. You should also try filming your lessons for a real objective lens into your practice. While it might be uncomfortable at first, it really does help to overcome negative self-perceptions and recognize the strengths that you bring to the classroom. By reflecting on your teaching strengths and celebrating them, you build a sense of self-worth and belief, which ultimately leads to confidence. If you ever feel like you're stuck in a negative mindset and have no confidence at all, start by being more introspective. Be grateful. Write down all the things that make you happy and all the successes that you've achieved in your life. Many times we get so negative without looking at all the great things that we have done. Having imposter syndrome means that you're constantly second guessing your position and achievements in life. You might believe that it's luck or circumstance that got you where you are, but it's not. So write down all the things you've accomplished and all the good things that are happening in your life. The sun is shining. I have loving friends. My partner supports me. Celebrate your successes and it'll make you more confident. Focus on the why. Why do you want to be more confident? If you were a confident, bulletproof teacher, how would that affect your life? If you were in total control of your classroom, you would have no worries, no anxiety about walking into that classroom and teaching your students. You would be that happy teacher you always imagined yourself being in your dreams. But there is also an additional benefit to being a more confident teacher. Besides having a stress-free, happy life, your students will also get the best teacher by becoming more confident in yourself and your ability as an educator. Your classes will skyrocket. Confident teacher equals happy teacher equals a better learning experience for all your students. So if you ever doubt yourself and wonder why you want to be a more confident teacher, remember this. You owe it to yourself to be the best possible teacher you can be. You owe it to yourself and you owe it to your students.